Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on a kids playroom tour. Today I'm giving you a really special sneak peek into my living room and adjacent kids area. Kids playrooms are often a kaleidoscope of colors with a mishmash of toys, books, games, dolls, stuffed animals, Legos. How do you create a clean, stylish, and organized playroom all within the confines of your home? If you're like me, you have to carve out a kid's play area right in the middle of a living room. I don't have a whole lot of extra space in my home, so right now this is going to have to do. Watch this video for my top designer tips on how to incorporate a stylish kid's area in your living room in a chic and aspirational way. Let's first talk about the challenges of a typical play area. You may not have a separate room. How do you corral all the toys? store them, and organize them in a stylish and efficient manner. Here's a quick tour into my living room slash kids play area. Right when you open the front door, you are met with this open concept living space. I love how my home is completely open and I'm able to see from one side of the home to the other. If you're standing in the kitchen, you can see the living area and the playroom. You can also see out to my beautiful private courtyard. I love that once I knock down all of the interior walls of this space, it just feels so open, light, and airy. For a small family with young kids, this is really conducive to the way we use the home. I love the fact that while my husband is cooking in the kitchen or I'm cleaning up an adjacent area, I can still see the kids playing in the living room. As you can see, my living area is one long room. One area is the living room lounge area and the other area used to be a breakfast dining nook. I used to have this really small vintage glass table there that I absolutely loved. You'll remember that it had these really cool brass armchairs that I had reupholstered into my favorite like hot pink fuchsia color. I was having this like hot pink moment. And as Kamari grew up, I realized that I needed an entire area that was dedicated to her toys. It starts with one little corner and then all of a sudden it multiplies into this entire zone. The living room has had so many different personalities. I remember having this chic little sofa there with swivel lounge chairs and of course with kids in tow now we had to get rid of that and I had custom made a really swanky sectional for my living area. The sectional is the perfect place for all of the adults to not only lounge and watch TV, but we can also watch all of the kids while they're playing in the adjacent play area. I have symmetrical bookshelves that flank a media center. I couldn't find a media console that was long enough to span this entire media center. It would have cost me thousands of dollars to create custom cabinetry for my media console. So instead, I opted to purchase three freestanding cabinets that I simply place side by side. The effect you get is the same as a built-in, but without that built-in cost. My mid-century modern ranch style home lacks a whole ton of storage. So you'll notice that every single piece of furniture that I have in this home, especially in the living room and the kids' playroom, is all about storage and organization needs. It's a really great idea to use as much vertical height as possible in a home because not only do you raise your eyes up and it would appear as though your ceilings are actually higher than it is, but you also have a really neat and tidy way to organize all of your home decor and your kids' toys. To keep a play area looking neat, tidy, and organized, you must have the right tools in place. One bookshelf on the living room side houses all of my home decor items, my books, my plants. And then on the opposite end where the kids play area is, it's all about the kids. I was really inspired by Montessori-based kids learning and development, which really encourages that kids are independent from a very young age. Independence often means that you have toys and books in areas on shelves that they can access themselves. Nothing's too high, nothing's too low. They kind of see everything at a glance, which is what I absolutely love. I have color coded the storage of all of their toys because it makes it so much easier for Kamari to put her toys back, especially when she knows that everything has a place. And since the kids play area is in plain sight, visually it makes it just more stimulating for me as a designer. But the kids aren't the only ones with cool toys to play with. Mama needs something in my life that makes it easier for me to clean and organize on the daily too. They just released this game changing product. The Mach V1 Ultra is a smart and powerful cordless stick vacuum with an innovative built-in steam mop that vacuums and mops at the same time. 
Yes, cordless, everyone. Mach V1 Ultra is unlike any stick vacuum I've ever used. It's super easy to set up and it's really intuitive. You simply plug it in the vase for its initial charging and then you just start vacuuming or mopping. There's a simple trigger that operates the machine. There's also a detachable tank of water below the handle that triggers that steam feature. Plus the Mach V1 Ultra even has a fan to help dry the floor as you mop so there's no wet streaky mess. What I love best about it is its slim, sleek, futuristic, very modern looking design. I love that it's really minimal because for me, I am a maximalist. So there is toy explosion, there's color explosion. There's a whole lot of design and color and decor in my home. So when it comes to sourcing the perfect home appliance that perfectly integrates with the interior design of my home, I'm always looking for something really sleek and minimal. There's a color bar that runs atop of the base and it lights up red to let you know that the steam is ready. The wand has two water tanks that easily snap into place. One holds the clean water and one holds the dirty water separately. I love that Mach designed the tank using the principle of optical refraction, which means that it can visually hide the internal structures such as the water pipes so that as you fill the water, it maintains the overall transparent minimalist style. I mean, how cool is this? I was actually worried that the Mach V1 Ultra would take a whole lot of space, but it ended up being quite compact for a stick vacuum. A key feature of the Mach V1 Ultra is that it has multiple cleaning modes for different messes. Depending on how and what you're cleaning, you can use the mode button to toggle between vacuuming, smart mode, or steam mode. I start out in smart mode, which vacuums and mops the floor at the same time. When you grip the handle intending to push the heavy vacuum across the floor, I was so surprised that the vacuum actually gently leads the way with minimal effort on my part. It's almost like its own robot vacuum. Once you place it back on the charging base, you just press the button on the top of the handle to activate self-cleaning mode. This cleans and disinfects the vacuum tube as well as a rolling brush on the bottom and it really just takes like 40 minutes and sounds like white noise. You get about 80 minutes of runtime on a single charge in vacuum mode or smart mode. But the steam mode uses a little bit more battery power and I got about 15 minutes of steam cleaning before I had to recharge it. But still, that was enough time to clean the hardwood floors of my play area and living room, the tile in my entry, and the tile in my adjacent kitchen. My floors are clean, sanitized, and dried within 15 minutes, which is amazing. I have hardwood flooring on the floors, and to me, that is such a hard surface for the kids to play for extended periods of time. So I purchased these rubber mats for extra cushioning on the floors, and it makes it so much easier to clean all of these wipes and messes over time. Of course, if you have these rubber mats in your playroom, you know that underneath it can get completely filthy. The Mach V1 Ultra glides so effortlessly on hardwood floors as well as the rubber mats. I can vacuum the mats, I can pull it up to steam the hardwood floor underneath. It cuts my cleaning time in half and disinfects the entire area so easily. The Mach V1 Ultra is such a serious multitasker, like I am, because it vacuums and mops at the same time. Plus, it's the only one I know of its kind that's cordless and looks so chic alongside my existing decor. When you find a home appliance that looks that good, works quickly and efficiently to improve your life and your overall needs, to me, that is design gold. Thank you to Mach for sponsoring this video. Now back to my top tips on how to incorporate a kid's play area into your living space. Organization 101. Let's talk about how I organize my kids' toys in their dedicated play area. Once you pull all of your kids' toys out and take inventory, it's all about figuring out how to group like items together. I color code all of the kids' toys because I found that it makes it so much easier to put the toys back and it also makes it so much easier on the eyes and my living room when it's designed in this method. I group all like items together. The cars go with the cars, Legos with Legos, dolls and clothes with all their little parts, kitchen goods like plates, pots, pans, food items alongside the kitchen, Play-Doh with the Play-Doh, all the art supplies like their markers, their crayons, the doodle pads, all in one area. There's a whole lot of pink in this house, so I have a few columns that are dedicated to all of their pink toys. All Peppa Pig toys are together. You can use acrylic see-through bins for all of the smaller items. 
all the balls go into an open wire bin. This makes it so much easier for the kids to pull out the balls and play with it and put it back whenever they're done. I love using these really inexpensive baskets that I found from Ikea. They're actually drawer inserts, but I love repurposing them for the kids' toys. There's pretty much a bin or a way to corral all of their toys in every single cubby. I even dedicated this wicker storage basket for all of the plugs and electrical items. The bottom three shelves are all for the girls. Everything is within reach so they can access it, put it back, play with it. Pretty much everything is on demand and perfectly organized here in their play area. The top two shelves house my interior design magazines and all of the interior design, home decor, food, restaurants, and cookbooks that integrate perfectly within this bookshelf design. There's a place for everything and everything is in its place. Measure the height, width, and depth of all of the cubbies and source baskets to fit every single one. Since this is an Ikea shelf, Ikea actually makes baskets to fit all the cubbies, but I prefer to use these drawer inserts, which makes it so much easier for the kids to lift and carry. Use see-through containers to store the smaller items. I like these little plastic bins with the handles on top since they're so much lighter than acrylic boxes. But you can use anything that makes it so much easier to see all of the toys at a glance. Take advantage of all of the vertical height of your space. Install vertical bookcases, tall cabinets, even wall-to-wall -wall shelving that doesn't look like a typical toy storage. The idea is that when the kids grow up, you could repurpose any of these furniture pieces to reuse within your home. How do you keep toys hidden in plain sight? I have this really stylish bassinet that the girls actually used to sleep in, but now that they're so much older, I use it for all of their stuffed animals. I have these oversized baskets that you might remember from my dining room makeover. I store some of the smaller items that Khalees loves to play with right now because she is in full walking mode. This basket also doubles as a place for you to put your throws and your pillows, especially if the play area is right next to your living room. Let's talk about my fireplace. It's this little open firebox that I have never ever used. Even pre-kids, I used to use my fireplace just to hold candles that I would light every single time we had guests over. It was just really moody, it was ambient, but now to me it's a fire hazard to use this fireplace, especially with all these little kids. I have repurposed this fireplace area into another place for, you guessed it, the kids' toys. I found that it was a perfect place for their Legos. I have all of the smaller Lego pieces in a freestanding tote and all of the larger Lego pieces in a basket. So when the kids want to play with it, I just pull out the tote or I pull out the basket and they, they can lay it all over the floors. Having a place for everything is not just about an organized and aesthetic lifestyle. It also cuts down to the amount of cleaning time that you commit to every single day. We hosted our friends this weekend and had some of Kamari's friends over. It took me exactly two minutes to clean up this entire play area from last night's pileups. So for me, in a house full of kids, that is a total win. I want to leave you with my top designer tip when it comes to sourcing furniture for your kids' play area. Don't purchase storage and organization furniture specifically for a toy room. Think about multi-purpose items that can be reused once the kids grow up. Even though I'm a super organized, neat and tidy person, I always look for furniture with closed cabinets and deep drawers. That makes it so much easier for me to store seasonal items, seasonal toys. It also makes it easier to cycle out the toys just in case they get bored of them. I make it a habit to rotate the toys, books and games that the girls play with. I don't want them to get sick of their toys and seeing the same toys over and over makes nothing feel new again. So a good rule of thumb is to have a piece of furniture in your home that makes it so much easier for you to cycle out these toys. That's it for today's video. What did you think of our kids playroom tour? Did you get some good ideas on how to store and organize your kids toys? As an interior designer, I cannot stress how important it is for you to have nothing in your home that embarrasses you, which includes your kids' play area. We have guests over almost every single weekend. A common question that I get asked all the time, especially if you're watching the stories on my Instagram or my TikTok, is how do you keep the kids' area so clean? After watching this video, I hope you found all of my tips and tricks helpful. I don't clean up anything when I have guests come over. Play dates are such a common thing here. Not only do I have a lot of friends with a lot of young kids that we host regularly, but I find that this little exposed play area makes my home feel so much more lively and vibrant as a result. 
this is my life right now. I have a toddler, I have a baby. They're kind of all over the place. They play in every single room. If I have a dog bed for my dog in every single room, I can easily have toys for my girls in every single room as well without feeling like it's a total eyesore. Kalise is walking right now and Kamari is in a whole nother stage when it comes to her learning and development. They're pretty much using this entire house as their own little experimental laboratory and I'm here for it. If you like this type of content and you want to see more of my home, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any questions when it comes to designing and organizing your kids play area. Share this video with anyone you know who's looking to incorporate more kids playroom ideas into their own home and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop on the channel every single Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.